Welcome to Opless TV. Today we have Meredith Jones, author of Women of the Street, Why Female Money Managers Generate Higher Returns and How You Can Too. Meredith, can you tell me about your professional background and your motivation for writing this book? So I actually started in the alternative investment industry about 17 years ago. I started in 1998, about six months before long-term capital management blew up, which was kind of a scary and incredibly challenging time to enter what was a completely new industry for me. I was working at an alternative investment asset allocator as their head of research and was doing due diligence and index construction as well as portfolio construction and other types of research for them. From there I went to a quantitative analysis shop and then to Barclays Capital where I did research and consulting and finally to Rothstein Cass where I also did research and consulting and was the head of their think tank. Now the common theme across all of those obviously is that I am a big nerd. I did research across all of those different shops. Starting in 1999 when I helped to put together testimony for Congress about the long-term capital management blow up to 2002 where I actually tried to determine what the actual size of the hedge fund universe was to 2006 where I started to research the outperformance of emerging managers, meaning small and young funds. In 2011, I started to take an interest in diversity funds, so minority and women-owned funds and what they may contribute to a portfolio. And for rather obvious reasons, I took a particular interest in the female component of that equation. And so I started to focus pretty much exclusively on female-run funds and the diversification and uh, return generation benefits they can add to a portfolio. There have been reports published that in the industry, within the hedge fund industry, women do outperform men. Now, can you speak to those? And is it a sample size issue? Are there enough women hedge funds to be able to derive uh, conclusive evidence? Uh, talk about your research and what you found. I think that the interesting thing is that there has been research done across a variety of samples. So obviously a lot of the research that I've worked on has been in the alternative investment community. So I did the research at Rothstein Cast that showed that there was significant outperformance of women-run hedge funds versus the universe at large. In fact, there was about a six percentage point differential over a six and a half year period. And yes, you're correct, that is a relatively small sample. We usually had anywhere between 67 and 82 funds that were reporting for that index. One thing I will point out, however, was it was a very large portion of, a, of the universe. So there's only about 125 female-run hedge funds that exist, and so we were capturing the vast majority of those funds within that index. But the research isn't only on hedge funds. So there's been a tremendous amount of research on things like brokerage accounts. So Barbara and Odin, for example, did a research report looking at 35,000 brokerage accounts. And what they found was that there was significant outperformance, about a percent or more a year, in terms of outperformance of women versus men. Vanguard has done studies on IRA accounts where they looked at 2.7 million IRA accounts and showed that there was significant outperformance by the women-run IRAs in comparison to the men. And so, yes, you do tend to have a fairly small sample size in certain portions of the universe, but when you look at the totality of the research, it's a really robust area of research. There's really robust samples. And it seems to me to be completely unbelievable that retail investors, meaning the brokerage accounts and the IRAs, would demonstrate this outperformance, and yet the professional money managers would not. And so I, I think we have a lot of data that is disparate, but that is all pointing towards the same conclusion. Why is this outperformance of women noticeable in your research? And if so, why hasn't Wall Street picked up on it? Well, I think there's three primary factors that ex help to explain this outperformance. The first is a biological component. So let's face it, women are just different than men. They have different hormone levels. For example, men have a lot more testosterone than women have. And everyone has cortisol, which is a stress hormone, but cortisol and testosterone 
interact in some very specific ways. You can even get into, from a biological perspective, things like brain structure. So for example, the amygdala, which is one of the oldest parts of your brain and what controls the fight or flight response, is much larger in men. And it also has different connectivity. And it has a tendency to make men react a little more outwardly to stress, where women tend to internalize stress a little bit more. The nucleus accumbens, which is the pleasure center of your brain, can impact risk taking particularly in men. And so you definitely see some very defined biological components to the outperformance. In addition, you have cognitive components. So this has to do with how information is taken in and processed. Women have a very different probability weighting curve than men. So it tends to be much flatter and they also have a tendency to do a very good job of matching their expected outcome with their actual outcome. In addition, women tend to be less overconfident than men. So when you're overconfident as an investor, you believe that every idea that you have to buy is a good idea and every idea that you have to sell is a good idea. And what that results in is a lot of overtrading. And as we all know, overtrading really erodes returns over time. So you can see that the biological component and the cognitive component actually translate into actual behaviors. So again, women trade less. There was a study, the Barber and Odin study that I referenced earlier, single men trade 67% more than single women. That's not insubstantial. You also tend to see that women are less likely to sell into a market drawdown. During the period 2007 to 2009, the Vanguard study that I referenced earlier showed that women were 10% less likely to sell into that market drawdown. And as a result, they generated returns about three percentage points higher than the men in the study. And so those are just some of the examples of the behaviors that can be very profitable. Now, as to why Wall Street hasn't really picked up on this yet, I think that there has not yet been an acceptance that there are sustainable advantages that come from working with women in investments. Every time that I presented the numbers, the fact that women had empirically outperformed, I would get some pushback on those. Well, it's just because female-run funds tend to be smaller, and so as they get larger, that outperformance will go away. Or only the best and brightest women are able to make it through the gauntlet of Wall Street. And so when more women are managing money, then that outperformance will go away. But I think what we can see from the book and looking at those three factors, biology, cognition, and behavior, is that those are not things that are transient. They're not gonna go away as fund sizes get bigger. They're not gonna go away as you get more women on Wall Street. And so once Wall Street does realize that there is a compelling profit advantage, return-based advantage to having more women, I believe that, that, that they will pick up on that and will start to hire more. So how many women managers are there in the hedge fund universe? And I mean, is most of this due to sort of a misogynistic view of women in the marketplace? When you think about uh, women on Wall Street, the numbers are actually pretty low. So the generally accepted number in terms of the percentage of women managing capital on Wall Street is about 5%, which is obviously not where most people would like it to be. When you start looking at the alternative investment industry, the numbers are really quite abysmal. So I did a study recently that uh, did not make it into the book, but it has been on my blog. And what that showed was that there was an 80 to one ratio of male to female managers. And even more shocking perhaps, is that when you look at managers with specific names, so I looked at all of the managers that were named John, James, William, or Robert. There are 11 men named John, James, William, or Robert for every one female hedge fund manager. When you look at private equity, the numbers are even worse. For every six John, James, William, or Robert uh, private equity GPs, there are no female general partners of a private equity firm. So the numbers are in fact quite low. Now it's difficult I think to pinpoint one or two or even a handful of reasons why this may be. I mean, we can talk about work-life balance, we can talk about the transitions from MBA school into investment banking, we can talk about hiring practices. But frankly, I think that all of that is eclipsed by the fact that Wall Street is an extraordinarily returns-driven environment. And as I mentioned before, I think the single best way to change 
the number of women that are actually managing money is to demonstrate that there is a compelling reason to hire women and invest in women. And we're starting to see increased demand uh, by investors for more diversification based on gender and race within Wall Street. And as investors make those demands and as Wall Street realizes that there is return and outperformance to be gained from doing this, as well as assets, I do think that those hiring practices and the number uh, will change and the numbers will increase. Because money management is one of those industries where at the end of the day, you either make money for people or you don't. And so whether your name is Leah or Leonard, your numbers are your numbers. And that was something that was very attractive to the women that I interviewed. And it was something that they saw as motivating because it meant to them that they could get to where they wanted to go. So I think a lot of people would say that, you know, what you're saying is that people should just throw all their money at women and allocate most of their portfolios to women. How would you view, you know, their perspective and people who are skeptical of your perspective? I think that in, if you did that, then obviously you'd be exchanging one set of behavioral biases for the, another set of behavioral biases. And the whole point is to have diversification of behavior in your portfolio. I think the bigger point that I'm trying to make is that people should consider the impact of behavior on their portfolio. Right now, people really look at very specific types of alpha. They look at the alpha that's generated by a strategy. So whether a strategy is in favor, like futures have been in favor for the last 12 or 14 months. And so a lot of people have been flocking to that. You look at the alpha that can be generated from skill. So obviously, you always hope to find a skilled manager. People look at the alpha, unfortunately, that can be generated by luck, which is something that we hope to avoid, but a lot of people, it's, sometimes it's difficult to tell luck from skill. But what we don't tend to look at is the alpha that can be generated by behavior. And so what I am putting out there is a pretty radical idea, and that is we should consider that behavior can be a driver of returns. And if that is the case, we need to have different types of behavior within an investment portfolio.